Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's get to the next question. Have animals ever helped humans? Of course, many times. And Quran talks about it as well. Today I want to talk about one such story that we know of that the very first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered an animal to help a human being. In this case, the animal is a bird. And to be more specific, it's a crow. How does the story goes by? Let's open the Quran and learn about it. And then I would want to talk about a few more pointers here before we come to the conclusion of the story. So open Surah Al-Ma'idah, which is the fifth surah in the Holy Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the sons of Adam, Habil and Qabil. Qabil, the bad one, killed his own brother Habil. And this is also mentioned in the previous books like Torah, for example, also talks about the story. So Jewish and Christian people also are familiar with this story. But anyway, so whatever is the case, whatever was the matter of the dispute, Qabil killed Habil. Remember that. Sometimes people get confused. So remember, Qatl is the killing, which comes with the letter Qaf, sound Qa, and so does the name Qabil. So from Qatl, remember Qabil. Qabil is the killer. And the one who died is Habil. So Qabil killed his brother Habil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it in Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 30. That فَقَتَلَهُ He killed him فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And then after that, he was among those people who have literally lost things in this life and hereafter. Because remember in Surah Al-Asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Indeed, man is doomed. Except for those, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who believe, عَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Do good deeds. And they steadfast with truth. And they steadfast with the right, the right things. But anyway, so here in ayah number 30, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا يَبْحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُرِيَهُ كَيْفَ يُوَارِي سَوْءَةَ أَخِيهِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a crow that brought another crow that died and it just started digging the ground. And then once it had dug the ground enough to bury the other crow, it buried the other crow and flew away. And at that point, Qabil, observing the crow, realized, I am so stupid that I could not even figure this out. And I, and I killed my own brother with my own hands. He is realizing it. And I couldn't figure out a way how to get rid of his body. And now he started digging the ground, created a grave, buried his brother, closed the grave, and that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped us, helped humans, teach, taught us how to bury our own um, when they pass away. So in this particular case, he said, قَالَ يَا وَيْلَتَ أَعْجَزْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ That I am so uh, incapable that this bird is much capable than me that figured out how to bury its, its own. And I couldn't. So he was at that point for Asbaha min al Nadimin. He was ashamed of his doing, but it was too late. That's why in Bukhari and Muslim it is Muttafaqun alayh. Remember, Muttafaqun alayh means the hadith comes in both Bukhari and Muslim. That both ulama, both shuyukh are, have the ittifaq, have the consensus of reporting it. So it's called God. It's, that's why it's called Muttafaqun alayh. And among the seven categories of Sahih hadith, this is the topmost category that it is a muttafaqun alayh hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that any time this particular crime happens that somebody is killed unjust. So the killer gets a sin and so does Qabil because he was the first one who started this. So any time somebody does a sin, something that's wrong, and they are the starter of that sin. So as long as that sin keeps getting practiced, the, the sinner gets a sin. Also, the person who started it also gets part of, the, like, also gets the same amount of sin without anybody losing the sin. It's not a split of the sin. So if the sin, let's say, weigh this much, they both get the same amount. And this is 
also reported. Now, you probably, let me, let me sh show you where this is reported, and then I'll get to my other points for today. So if you, mus if you open Sahih Muslim, in which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, in Sahih Muslim, Kitabu Zakah, this narration comes. Uh, hadith uh, 1017. Uh, and also in Kitabul Ilm, a Sahih Muslim, uh, the hadith is reported, and Imam Nasai also reports it that Prophet وسلم, said that Waman Sanna fil Islami Sunnatan Sayyatan. Anybody, anybody who starts an ill doing, Kana Alehi Wizruha wa Wizru Man Amila Biha Mim Badihi. So that sin's weight is on that person and also on anybody who does it after him. So he gets, uh, he continuously accumulates um, bad sin. Now, here comes the point that I want to make here that sometimes people are like, okay, uh, isn't that against um, the Quran? Because Quran says that nobody will carry anybody else's sin. So uh, is this hadith, even though it is sahih, going against the Quran? No, it is not. And I'll prove it to you from the Quran that how this hadith is not against the Quran. Let me first uh, tell you the ayah that people usually quote, and this is in Surah Al-An'am. And in Surah Al-An'am, this is ayah number 164, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى Nobody will carry anybody else's weight. I mean, nobody will carry anybody else's sin. So sometimes people are only looking at one ayah of the Qur'an and they come to the consensus that, oh, uh, nobody will carry anybody else's sin. So how in the world, uh, according to Sahih al-Bukhari, um, Qabil is carrying everybody's sin or according to this other hadith from Sahih al-Muslim that how can the starter of the sin carries um, the sin of everybody who keeps doing that sin and everybody who does it also gets that sin so isn't that against Quran? No it is not because the problem is sometimes we only look at one ayah of the Quran and do not look at the other ayah of the Quran so this ayah Surah Al-An'am ayah number 164 talks about your individual sin not about starting a sin. Now, when you are about to start a new category of sin and people are practicing that particular category of sin, now you have to look at another ayah from the Quran. This is Surah Al-Ankabut, which is Surah number 29, ayah number 13, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَحْمِلُنَّ أَثْقَالَهُمْ وَأَثْقَالًا مَعَ أَثْقَالِهِمْ And they will carry their weight and along with their that weight of sins, they will carry the weight of the sins of those people that they misguided. So every misguided person will have their own sin and the one who started this whole process will carry his own sin and also the sin sins of the people that followed him. So you have to keep an eye on ayahs from the Holy Quran collectively. You cannot make up your mind from just reading one ayah from the Holy Quran. I, th that's why I wanted to, to tackle multiple topics here to help you understand this whole idea. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us among those people who start goodness and people follow in that goodness so that we can get more reward and anybody who follow that can also get the reward. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from that path that we start some, some way of sinning and people follow on that way of sinning. So be very, very cautious and careful in your actions in your life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.